Hi everyone, I'm Svetlana Sakova, developer advocate in Kotlin. I'm happy to see you in this video of the Demagic Kotlin series devoted to solving puzzles from the Advent of Code Challenge. Today we're discussing the day 9 task, encoding error. You can find the full description at adventofcode.com to solve it via today night. We need to attack a weakness in data encrypted with the Exchange Masking Edition System, or XMAS. The data is a list of numbers. We need to find the first number in the list which is not the sum of any of two of the 25 numbers before it. We start counting from the 26th number. We'll call the number valid if it can be presented as a sum of two numbers from the previous sublist, and invalid otherwise. Two numbers that sum to a valid number must be different from each other. Let's look at an example. Let's say our first 25 numbers are 1 through 25 in random order. If the next number is 26, is it a valid number? Yes. Because it could be 1 plus 25 or many other pairs, like 2 and 24. Would 49 be a valid number? Again, yes. It's the sum of 24 and 25. 100 would not be valid next number. You can't find two numbers that sum to 100. 50 would also not be valid. Although 25 appears in the previous 25 numbers, the two numbers in the pair must be different. Let's now solve the task in Kotlin. For a start, let's implement a function that checks whether a given list contains a pair of numbers that sum up to a given number. We we'll later use this function to check whether a specific number in the list is valid. For convenience, let's define it as an extension on a list of longs. We need to iterate over all the elements in the list, looking for the two with a given sum. At the first naive attempt, we'll be using for each to iterate through the elements twice. We call it uh, this implicit receiver our list of numbers. We can check it in our sample input. It works as expected so far. But then we find out that this solution is wrong. First and second might refer to the same element, but as we remember from the test description, two numbers that sum to a valid number must be different. To fix that, we can iterate our list of elements with indices and make sure that the indices of two elements are different. We replace uh, for each with uh, for each indexed and add new lambda arguments as indices. This way, if first and second both refer to 25, they have the same indices, so they are no longer interpreted as a correct pair. We can rewrite this code and delegate the logic for finding the necessary element to Kotlin library functions. We can use any to iterate through indices instead of elements and check for a pair that meets that condition. Any returns true if the list contains an element that satisfies the given condition. The nested call returns true if two necessary elements are found, and the outer call returns true if they were found for a specific value of the first index. Indices is an extension property on collection that returns an integer range from 0 to collection size minus 1. We call it on this implicit receiver our list of numbers. Let's now implement a function that looks for an invalid number, one that is not the sum of two of the 25 numbers before it. Before we start, let's store the group size 25 as a constant. We have a sample input that we can use to check our solution. The sample input uses the group size 5 instead, so it's much more convenient to change uh, this constant in one place. We define the group size as a constval and make it a compile-time constant 
which means it'll be replaced with the actual value at compile time. Indeed, if you use this constant and look at the bytecode, you'll no longer be able to find the group size property. Its usage is replaced with the constant 25. We again defy the findInvalid number function as an extension on listLang. Let's first implement it more directly and then rewrite it using the power of standard library functions. We iterate over all indices starting from group size plus one up to the last index and for each corresponding element we need to check whether it's invalid. Let's build the previous group list. It should contain exactly group size elements. We run has pair of sum on it, providing the current element as the sum to check. If we find an invalid element, the one that can't be represented as a sum of two numbers, we return it. Otherwise, we return null. We can rewrite this code using the first or null library function. It finds the first element that satisfies the given condition. This allows us to find the index of the invalid number. Then we use let to return the element staying at the found position. Note how save access together with let allows us to return the element if one was found and null otherwise. To improve readability, we can follow a slightly different approach. Instead of iterating over indices by hand and constructing necessary sublists, we use a library function that does the job for us. The Kotlin standard library has the windowed function, which returns a list or a sequence of snapshots of a window of a given size. This window slides along the given collection or sequence, moving by one element each step. Here we build sublists or snapshots of size 2 and 3. This function fits our challenge perfectly as it can build sublists of the required size automatically for us. Let's write find invalid number once more. To have both the previous group and the current number, we use a window with the size group size plus one. The first group size elements form the necessary sublist to check, while the last element is the current number. If we find a sublist satisfying the given condition, its last element is the result. If you're interested in the performance difference between window and sublist functions, please check the blog post accompanying the video and a small note about it there. You can find the link to it in the description below. What we can further improve in our find invalid number function is to use sequences instead of lists. In the current solution, windowed eagerly returns the result, the full list of, of windows. So this windowed call builds the full list of sublists. If the required element is found in the very first sublist, it's not efficient. The change to sequence causes the result to be evaluated lazily, which means the snapshots are built only when they're actually needed. The change only requires one line, we convert a list to a sequence before performing any further operations. That's it! We improved the solution from the very first version, making it more idiomatic along the way. Now we are ready to find the result for our challenge. We need to read the input, as usual, convert it to a list of numbers and display the invalid number. Let's check our answer. It's correct. We can now move on and solve the second part of the task. The second part of the task requires us to use the invalid number we just found. We need to find a sublist of at least two numbers that go one after another and sum up to this invalid number. The result we are looking for is the sum of the smallest and the largest numbers in this range. For the following sample list, we need to find a sublist which sums to 127. In this list, adding up all of the numbers from 15 through 40 produces 127. To find the result, we add together the smallest and the largest number in this range. These are 15 and 47, and the result is 62. Let's now solve it in Kotlin. 
We need to find a sublist in a list with a given sum of its elements. Let's first implement this function in a straightforward manner, then we write the same logic using library functions, and finally identify a more efficient solution. To check the sum of every sublist of a given list, we try all the options for the list's chart and end indices. From index belongs to a full range of indices, while to index should be greater than from index, obviously, and shouldn't exceed the list size. We create the sublist to be checked then. The sublist function expects the second argument to be exclusive, not inclusive upper bound. That's why the maximal value for to index is size, not last index. We then check whether the sum of the elements equals target sum. If so, we return the found sublist from the function. We can rewrite this logic using the first not null of or null function. We iterate over possible values for from index and for to index and look for the first value satisfying the given condition. We need to return the required sublist from the lambda or null otherwise. If the sublist with required sum is found, it's returned from both first not null of or null calls as the first found no null value. We can simplify it and write using the takeIf function. The result of the takeIf call is the receiver expression, the sublist, if it satisfies the given condition, or null if it doesn't. In this case, takeIf call returns the found sublist if the sum of its elements is equal to the provided target sum. I understand that when you see it for the first time, take if might look uh, like a more confusing option for you, and explicit if as a more clear option. But usually, after some time, Kotlin developers get used to these library functions, start using them more often, and find such code more concise and clear. Alternatively, we can again use the windowed function here. For each possible size, we try to find the sublist of a given size satisfying our condition. We build all the lists, windows, of this size to check each one. We return the first sublist with a given target sum of its elements. As before, we convert the input list into a sequence to perform the operation in a lazy manner. Each new sublist is created when it needs to be checked for some. All the functions we considered so far work for the challenge input and give the correct answer, but have one common disadvantage. They manipulate the sublist of all possible sizes and for each one calculate the sum. This approach isn't the most efficient. But we can do better, can't we? We can pre-calculate all the sums of sublists from the first element in the list to each element. Then we can use these prefix sums to easily calculate the sum between any two elements. Let's see how. From index refers to the first element in our sublist, and to index refers to the element right after the sublist. If we have the sum of the elements from 0 to from index and the sum of the elements from 0 to to index, the sum of the elements from from index to to index can be found by subtracting the former from the latter. We need to precalculate the prefix sum for each element. We can use the standard library scan function for that. It also has another name running fold. The fold and scan running fold functions are related. They both accumulate values starting with the initial value. On each step, they apply the provided operation to the current accumulator value and the next element. The difference is that fold returns only the final result, while scan returns the result for all the intermediate steps. Now let's precalculate the prefix sums using the scan function. We return to our previous solution with indices, because now we don't need to build sublists explicitly. We only need to check the sum for given from index and to index. As we discussed, the sum for a given sublist is a subtraction of prefix sums for to index and from index. If the list with the target sum was found, we return it as before. In this solution, 
we explicitly build only the sublist of the required sum to return it as the result. Let's now call the find sublist of sum function to find the result for our initial challenge. We need a not null result, and if the input is correct, it should be this way. So let's check it and report an error if find invalid number returns null. The error function simply throws illegal state exception. After we found the invalid number in, the, in part 1, we pass this value as an argument to the find sublist of sum function. Again, we expect a not null result if the task input is correct. Finally, we can find the sum of, of minimum and maximum values of the resulting list, as our task requires. That's all! We discussed the solution for the Day 9 Advent of Code Challenge and worked with any first or null, first not null or null, windowed, take if and scan functions, which demonstrate a more idiomatic Kotlin style. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching it.